Good morning, everybody. It's about 8.15 in the morning and Michael will be in meetings all day for work. So I am gonna set out on foot and see what's around this castle here in Dublin. So come on, let's go. In case anyone just clicked on this video, we are staying in the Clontarf Castle Hotel in Dublin, Ireland. The castle itself is absolutely stunning and I think I'm gonna have to do a video just dedicated to the castle and how beautiful it is. But also they have so much art and tapestry and furniture. It's just a wonderful place to be. I'm really lucky that this is the place Michael's company picked to have their meetings for the week. And I get to just run around this castle and look at everything and enjoy a few days of the castle life. This is the restaurant called Fahrenheit inside the castle. I thought the, the restaurant itself is basically a work of art, but it is a beautiful sit down dining breakfast buffet. That's honey, by the way. I thought my uncle would appreciate that. There's your cereal bar, your breads, rolls, and all kinds of, uh, this says homemade pastries. Here's our fruit and cheeses, absolutely delicious. Some salami. We got eggs all different kinds of ways, and those are the best scrambled eggs I've ever had in my life. Bacon, sausage, it was just amazing. This is some of the best food I think I've ever had. There's not much in the way of grounds and gardens in this castle. We've got a lot of statues of lions, and uh, well, there's another look at the castle for you, but what you're seeing is pretty much most of it. Um, one of my favorite things when I travel out of the country is seeing new plants or new strains of plants. And I don't really care so much what they're called, but I do enjoy the new colors, fresh flowers, fresh shaped leaves. So there you go. We've pretty much walked through the entire gardens of the castle. Is a crescent shaped group of townhomes built in 1792. Uh, number 15 on Marino Crescent, that's the, the street address, is where Bram Stoker was born, the author of Dracula. Sadly, Bram spent the first seven years of his life in bed due to a mystery illness. Nowadays, right across the street from his house is this really cute little public park. Uh, you walk around a stone wall to find a gate that's open. And it's really, really pretty. Very lush and green with some benches here and there. I was doing my best not to film other people in the park, but there were quite a few people cutting, cutting through it to get from one street to the next. And there were some people out letting their dogs run free too. So it was a really nice little find. And right around the corner is a little coffee shop called Bram's Cafe. It was pretty crowded, so I didn't film inside, but the coffee was great. And you're not missing anything because there's absolutely no sign of Bram Stoker or Dracula inside. I came upon Fairview Park. It's very large. I think if you wanted to get a good long hard run in on these paths, you really could. It was mostly flat with a few hills. It was actually pretty crowded when I was there and I tried my best not to film other people. But there were a lot of runners and joggers out, a lot of moms with strollers, um, and quite a few people actually walking their dogs. It seems like there might not be a leash law here because at least half the dogs I saw were not on leashes, but all of them were super well behaved and following right along behind their people. So I had a good time watching the dogs having a lot of fun. 
I have no idea who this is a statue of, but it looks like birds have been landing on his head. The park ends at a river and everyone had to stop and admire how many birds were just chilling probably waiting on someone to throw them something to eat. But uh, they were absolutely not afraid of people. Probably would have landed right on my arm if I had something I could have given them, but I didn't want to be attacked by the birds. dismayed to see how much litter and trash was all over this park. That's something I'm not really used to back home and I definitely tried not to photograph any of it and pick up what I could, but it just doesn't seem like everyone is quite as respectful as I'm used to. part I felt safe although I did see a few homeless encampments at the very far perimeter. I wasn't able to catch any good audio of all the birds in the trees but I don't know if they were mating or nesting or what. They were making some really cool noises and I stood and listened to them for a long time. kids playing on the playground so I thought it would be safe to show you what a cool looking playground this is. These are the famine sculptures created in 1997 and it's a commemorative work dedicated to the Irish people forced to immigrate during the 19th century Irish famine. I especially like the hungry dog following them. sculpture is called the linesmen and it is to commemorate the men who work on the docks unloading the ships docking the ships and many other heavy physical jobs this is a statue of Constance Markievicz she was a founding member of the Irish Citizen Army 
and took place in the Easter Rising in 1916 when Irish Republicans attempted to end British rule and establish an Irish Republic. She was actually sentenced to death for this, but it was commuted to life imprisonment because of her sex. She was the first woman elected to the UK House of Commons, and she was also one of the first women in the world to hold a cabinet position as Minister of Labor from 1919 to 1922. Of course, my favorite part of this sculpture is her cocker spaniel named Poppet. This is James Connolly, an Irish Republican, Socialist, and Trade Union leader. This sculpture is called Chariot of Life. It's from 1982, and it's supposed to represent reason controlling the emotions. I couldn't find any information about these trippy little guys online. All I know is this is called Talking Heads and it's by Carolyn Mulholland. It seemed like there was a ton of construction going on up and down the street. It made it a little tough for me to find the sidewalk some of the time. But off the beaten path, I found some cute rivers and bridges and even these weird little pencil traffic barrier things. This is a charity shop I popped in hoping to find a little funky gift to take someone back home. I didn't buy anything but I did enjoy looking around. this yard, all the little gnomes and flowers. I stood here forever looking at it until I thought maybe I'd be creeping out the homeowners. My hands were swollen because of walking so much and it being so cold. Back to the castle. My cell phone battery was about to die and I was afraid I might get lost without having GPS so I decided to go back to rest my very very sore swollen and tired legs. Well my phone battery was about to die so I came back to the room. Um, I didn't want to risk getting lost and not having directions. My legs are like super duper swollen. Michael texted me and asked me where I was and how far I'd gone and I don't really I don't have a way of keep like I don't have an Apple watch or anything to actually keep up with miles but my legs I can usually tell by how my legs feel about how many miles I've put on them and I'm gonna say I walked at least probably at least five miles maybe more I walked from this castle all the way to city center and I walked around city center quite a bit and then I took my time kind of meandering on the way home so um anyway I'm gonna actually work on this video for a little bit I've got my feet propped up on two pillows in front of me for that swelling and um I'll let you know what I'm gonna do next they're doing work on the outside of the castle um all the scaffolding was set up this afternoon while I was taking a little rest I may have just committed a castle faux pas <laughs> I thought the Fahrenheit restaurant where we had breakfast this morning, the buffet, uh, would be open, but it's actually closed between lunch and dinner, so I had to go downstairs to a new place called Night's Bar, and, and the menu was very similar to what we had to choose from last night for our, uh, for our room service, but it was really crowded, mostly a lot of old folks in there, and I just didn't want to sit there and eat by myself, so I asked for a plate of food to go to bring back to the room, 
that might not have been the right thing to do. <laughs> they seemed a little flummoxed why I didn't just call room service to bring it to me, but I just, I just didn't want to pay the extra couple dollars, and I thought I could save someone a trip up the stairs, but anyway, it was delicious. I had, but I'll show you. I got that eight ounce burger, no bun. This time I got no fries, pickles, and I just said, any kind of cheese you have, just throw some cheese on my plate. And don't worry, these vegetables are about to go. Michael's back on break. I am, Julie got me, she found two types of kombucha. Never seen kombucha in a plastic bottle before. I'm very surprised that Europe has plastic, number one. Oh, this is made in Austria. I just seen it on the back here. And it's in plastic. And it's in plastic, very weird. It's called Classic. It tastes like hairspray. Um, <laughs> no, it's drinkable, but they actually use... It's it's neat because it has half the carbs of the lowest um, amount of carbs that we have found in the U.S. And it's because they use beet sugar as their sweetener. So that's... Uh, what, what brand is it? What flavor? What brand is it? Good question. This is Rock Fruchtsafte. <laughs> And this is classic. <laughs> the flavor is called classic? The, fa the flavor is called classic. Do you believe in karma? We do. It's a 100% recycled bottle, though. Um, well, do you like it? It's okay. It smells really weird, and it's probably because of the beets. But, no, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Also, told Julie, did not get a film of it because I was eating with um, business colleagues. But today at lunch, we had two options. You could either get traditional fish pie. Looks as gross as it sounds, but does not taste that way. With vegetables, or vegetables and a cold meat platter. Hmm. So at first I'm like, okay. Guys, a cold meat platter is raw beef. <laughs> It is what? I would have loved that. That I wish think, you had brought me some. I'm trying to remember what they said. It's like um, it's not fully dry aged, so yeah. it's not like it's bleeding all over the place. But it's also not like jerky. It's kind of an in between. But but it is very very rare, almost purple rare. Wow. So was it good? I didn't eat it. Oh. <laughs> I got the fish pie. And no, it was the same guy that waited on us. Yeah. This morning. So he sees me and he starts dumping. I mean, he, he filled this plate full. I should have only got one spoonful, but he probably knows we're American and probably has no clue what I'm going to think this is. And the lady behind me, she says, um, I'll have that too, but about half of what you put on this plate. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, ma'am, we're doing doubles today. We're doing <laughs> double servings. And I was like, you must be trying to get rid of this. <laughs> so imagine... Because fish pie, I get I get pictures in my head. But imagine a very soft fish in almost a casserole type of um, of thickness. So not mashed potato, but thick, um, almost like a like a potato, like a chowder or or a potato soup. So a little bit thick. It did have potatoes and it had cheese in it. But I was Julie knows. I don't do a whole lot of fish that's not fried fish. Crab I'll do, but but this, and it smelled. The whole room smelled of fish. So I was a little worried, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm in Ireland. We've been trying new things um, since we got here. So I sat down and had it. And I won't say it was amazing. You probably would have, because I know you like fish just about anyway. But it was very good. There was absolutely zero fish taste to it at all i don't know what kind of I fish didn't that smelled like fish but did not taste like fish. yes yeah. <laughs> i think it was a cod it was caught fresh off of um it's Clontarf bay over here mm -hmm. and um yeah it was so much better than what i expected wow um but i wouldn't say amazing but a lot better than what i expected it to be so that's awesome didn't have the vegetables um, but did eat that. Didn't have any bread or anything. But I had a few bites of that. Did not have the afternoon snack. See, in Europe, they give you a morning snack and an afternoon snack. You eat so many times a day, it's ridiculous. They had cream puffs mm. with clotted cream and jam on them. And I did not get it. I'm, thinking, oh. I'm patting myself on the back for that one. I, 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 did not, <laughs> I did not get it. But I do want to try some clotted cream while we are here, for sure. We got plenty of time. We'll find some. Yeah. So I've got a break for about an hour 
and then I have um, been the only time, the full day of working, I have a business dinner tonight that um, none of our spouses get to go to, but it's just on the on the water. It's, it's right down here. I think she said a 10 minute walk. So, nice. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. Man, it's a beautiful walk. You will love it. While Michael goes to dinner, I've got to do a little TLC on all this road rash. Let me show you what it looks like now that I've just sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide and it's almost completely healed up. Oh. Upper thigh here and left knee. He's back. It's 10.15. I am beat. Today was a long day. But Julie wanted me to go through uh, where I ate and what I ate. We had dinner at the baths. B-A-T-H-S, um, on Clontarf, so that was by the river, and uh, it was a very small menu, but that was because it was um, for us, you know, if, if you look online, the menu's much larger, so we had a three-course, um, I had the organic hen's egg salad as my starter, that is lettuce, garlic, herb croutons, um, crispy pancetta, pine nuts, a soft, two soft boiled eggs, and Parmesan shavings. So I kind of ate around, I don't, Julie knows I don't eat really eat salad. So I ate the boiled eggs and the Parmesan shavings and the crispy pancetta. There was no other meat option for the starter. Um, for the main course, I had a 10 ounce prime rib. <gasps> that was prime rib, sorry, ribeye. Ribeye. Uh, with um, a peppercorn sauce that went over top of it which was made from their au jus, some heavy cream, and just pepper. Like, it was simple, but it was really, really good. Uh, that was 10 ounce. They did come with, uh, they call them double fried crisps, and I thought they were going to be a chip, but stupid me remembers that that's not what you call a French fry in, in Europe. Crisps are French fries, so they were actually really thick-cut French fries, like bigger than the my thumb. I had a couple of those. I wanted to try those. And um, for dessert, I did, I did have oh. dessert. Hang on, I gotta find it. Um, it's not on here. Oh my goodness, is it really not on here? So I'm looking at their menu because I didn't take a photo of our menu with everybody from from work there. Yeah, our men the menu is not on here. I'm sorry. It was a <clears throat> a white chocolate meringue, and so that's you know just whipped egg whites. Um, that had um, white chocolate added into it and it had a raspberry um, compote, so just raspberries in their mm -hmm. own juice on top. And then there were like two pieces, two small pieces of white chocolate that had uh, ground up pistachio pieces in them oh, wow. that, that were put on top. It was, it was great. So um, a very good, again, I've kind of ventured out of my own little comfort zone, but um, the steak, I decided to do steak tonight. So steak was, was really, I was gonna say really well done. I ordered it medium, but it was it was prepared. It was great. It, it was a great steak. Um, the salad was a whatever, and the fries were really a whatever, and the dessert was, was good. So, awesome, I'm so yeah, excited for you. I, I wasn't mm -hmm. hungry till I heard you talking about no. steak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm ready for bed, but it's unfortunate that I'm, I got a full stomach um, and then tomorrow Julie goes with me and um, the rest of my company to a traditional Irish river dance uh, it's a whole event um, in another part of Dublin we'll all take a bus tomorrow at six and uh, so yeah I'm sure she'll film some of that tomorrow and let you know what we have there awesome. but that's what I ate today awesome as you can tell Michael was pretty tired from having a really long day on his feet and working all day so we cut the filming there just so we could get caught up really quick on how each other's day had been and crashed and went to sleep. So if you want to see the next day, just click the next link.